Hey, welcome back to the channel. So I haven't been uploading for a while. The main reason for that is because I just got back from India. Got all of the food poisoning out of my system and I'm ready to make a tier list. This is about two, maybe three weeks late. So we've actually got a pretty good grasp of how things are. I'm not going to go through my individual placements or like my individual tidbits for every agent. I'll just give a brief overview. So let's start with the duelists. I'm going to start with Neon. I think she's S tier because she's super versatile and she has the highest skill ceiling currently among all of the duelists and she's not really impeded by any of the characters out of the characters like sentinels right now or like not counters she's just very strong right now Ray's, i think also s tier very versatile nade is super strong jet i want to put a tier um but not below but not not in front of your i want to below your um my main problem with jet right now is that she's more of a comfortability pick and it's the only reason that she's really good very much gets out outdone by Yoru in many cases because Yoru has all the escapes, Yoru has all the flashes, Jet just has a dash button and smokes. And while she's pretty good for entering, we're starting to see a lot more teamwork for Nation, especially in ranked. Um, and I think that will ultimately lead to her being kind of pushed out of the meta. Like you, you're seeing less and less of her and her main place on maps is, is one to up and two because of the floating and the updraft so she's really good on abyss apart from that i think you're outshines her in every single way possible pretty much reina beta just a pub stop agent no mobility so she'll never be higher than that same with iso they're interchangeable but they're both really good on icebox um if you if you like playing these agents there's nothing wrong with that uh, they're just not you know they're, they're not as good as these agents um except for on icebox i think on icebox these are the standout best agents especially for ranked Phoenix C tier, he just, he has a weird gameplay loop, and his main problem is that you need his ultimate in order to be effective, but his ultimate is 6 points. Even though it's lowest cost ultimate, uh, it's not like it used to be, which is five, 5 point cost, which means you're pretty much useless until then. You have no mobility, your flashes kind of suck because you can't set them up uh, round to entry with you. You have to throw them out of your body, and you can get timing really easily, or someone can dodge the flash. And the rest of his kit is just not good. So we see. That's the duelist out of the way. Now, we're on to the Sentinels. And we're going to start with the newest addition of the game, Vice. I think, big take, I think Vice is actually a tier. I think she's really good. Unlike the other Sentinels, she kind of has the, the ability built into her kit to separate the duelist from the rest of her team. And she is, in many ways, a hard counter to this new duelist meta that we're seeing where it's these really fast take duelists that run in, they take the site before you can blink. The wall blocks them off, the flash flashes them, and the thorns slow them. You know, it's everything you can possibly want. Her delay is really good, and I think on some maps, she'll definitely be better than Cypher and Kildry. Speaking of which, I'm putting both of them in the same tier because I think they're kind of interchangeable. Um, and until we get people that are really good at Vice, um, or we see the true potential of Vice, because right now a lot of people don't actually know how to play against her, that's when we will know whether or not she's truly deserving of this eight spot but until then i think she's very playable if you have the ability to play her pick her every game that i've had advice on my team i've absolutely stopped the enemy on defense so that's all the proof that i need personally sage beta i think gimmicky but she can work on some maps not the maps that are currently in the rotation but definitely some maps she works on deadlock also b uh, actually i'm gonna put deadlock c i i, I think Previously, I had her in A or even S um, because I thought that she was going to fill the spot that Vice has. The truth is that Deadlock's ball just it doesn't cut it. Deadlock's ball utility, it, it isn't good enough. It's not fast acting enough. And you can very easily run it down on a Deadlock site almost as though there's no Sentinel at all on pretty much every map except Abyss. Chamber, also Cita. If you're running a Deadlock, you might as well fucking throw a Chamber in there too. Uh... The only strength this guy has is the ultimate and maybe the teleport. Maybe the teleport, but it's not it's not e like it's not even that good when you could pick Yoru. And Yoru honestly has more utility and is a, probably a better site anchor than Chamber. I'm sorry, Chamber players. I'm so sorry, but it's just true. That's it for the Sentinels. Now we're on to the initiators. Gecko, straight S tier. Sova, straight S tier. Fade, A, because she's just not quite as good as these two. Ko, also S tier. Because I think Chaos is just all flash lineups from really far away. Uh, knife for info. You know, all of these guys, they can do... These two can do stuff from range. Gecko can throw his utility and fight with it. And the main advantage he has is being able to ult twice in the same round. Use all of your utility twice in the same round. It refreshes, you know. That is a strength of Gecko. So good. Sky, Aether. The reason she's not Esther 
uh, is because she doesn't have the refreshable utility like these guys are definitely not like uh, like Gecko. Breach, also a to, I think, situational. You can't really run him as solo initiated because he didn't have information gathering utility. No dog, no knife, no eye, no arrow, no no flashes, you know. Um, but no flashes that give information. And I think that's his main downfall. That's it for the initiators. Now onto the controllers. Astra, I want to put a B tip. She's actually had a rise up in the meta recently. The main reason for that, I think, is because people are realizing she just isn't, She, you know, she isn't as bad as they thought she was. You can sit on the other side of the map and kind of anchor it and you can lurk and do that kind of thing. Lurking is becoming a bit more prevalent in this meta because we're seeing, we're actually seeing less sentinels on some maps. Even though they're all good, I think people are just preferring not to play them. And uh, the global, like global smoke, global abilities, a lot of utility. I think Astra's pretty good right now, but I don't think she's A. I don't think she's as good as Omen or Viper. Speaking of, Viper going straight into Esther, just self-explanatory. She's pretty much a sentinel and a controller mixed into one. As long as you have a dome smoker, you don't need a sentinel. Omen is the dome smoker. Omen goes straight into Esther. Omen's been at the top of this list since pretty much like 2021. So there's no surprise there. And I don't think he's ever going to fall off. Ever since they buffed Paranoia, he's been strong. The only problem is Kit has. And the reason he's not the strongest agent in the game is because he basically doesn't have an ultimate. Right? Like his ultimate is... To be honest, it's it's useless. But if they gave him ultimate, he would just be too strong. So just leave him the way he is. I think he's, he's cool and he's fun to play. And he's just all around the best, like, especially for ranked, he's the best dome smoke that you can pick. Clove, Beta, some of the situation is Brim. They are a fighting, fighting controller. And what that means is that they, they like to go out there. They like to take fights, they like die. The res is cool, but it, it, it's just gimmick. Um, I, I don't think you're getting as much value as you can playing clove as opposed to playing omen brim i think better than clove uh the the triple smokes is the main strength that brim has but apart from that kind of on the same level as clove and harbor unfortunately is d rated as <clears throat> rated as on my tier list the worst agent in the game and i'm sorry to all the three harbor players in the world but i just don't i just don't think he's good right now as much as i want him to be good you know for some indian representation in the game he just he's just not He's just not great. It's, the dome is cool. Um, and the wall is okay. And the, and the alt is okay. But he just gets outshined by all of these all of these agents. In the context of the entire game. In the context of every single agent. I, I know I've, I've tiered this a bit weirdly. Because I've done it not based on the context of the entire game. But the context of how good they are in their role. I think then in the context of the entire game. Harbour would probably be B. Because you could play harbor instead of viper but you wouldn't be able to lock down sites like a sentinel because there's no decay and there's no molly you need a lot of extra smokes to help this guy out because he also can't activate stuff from across the map and all of his abilities are one time use except as well with a bit of changes i think we can see him up the list but for now he's in detail so that's my tier list for patch whatever patch we're on you'll see it in the title i don't remember i haven't played the game for ages let me know if you agree or disagree in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bro,